Okay, here's the second game in the correspondence series. So we're playing as black here, and we're trying to basically utilize the the concepts of creative thinking, logicalizing the creative thinking, and not going crazy with the um, creative aspect. The creative aspect in my eyes is a, a good tool um, which needs just to be harnessed so that you can then make good logical movements going forward because the crazy side to the creative is that it does look for problems um, and the problems are there to try and safeguard you it's like basically walking out of the house and you know I could potentially get run over by a bus I could get stung by a bee I could fall down the, fall slip down the steps by accident all these things they're all risks you know so it's um, how you then mitigate that risk and that's where the creative aspect doesn't really go for mitigation per se it just goes for highlighting the problem and if but what if there well this could happen etc so it creates and builds a massive snowball effect of creative thought processes to try and keep you safe it more highlights the safety aspects you know you need to take care of this you need to take care of that but not necessarily provides solutions you know, this is where the logical brain needs to come into play and so there's nothing wrong with being creative in those terms it's just more a case of harnessing it in reining in the findings from the creative thought process or else then you end up making the, the wrong move harping back again to the devil finger so you've done your calculations and then your hand makes another move because creatively it's going oh no I think this one's better so from all my experiences of having the devil finger making the inappropriate moves I called it the devil finger because it really was <laughs> um, then coming to the realization that it's not just the hand itself it's the brain that's actually making the hand move to that position and what created that the creative thinking process so looking deeply into these um, ideas is what I'm trying to practice within these online correspondence games and any games that I'm playing with chess I'm now starting, trying to rein in the creative aspect but I need the creative access because that is the thing that makes me have the fear element so if you don't have the fear element in chess then you know you're not going to really understand okay well there's a danger there that's a blind spot that I need to take care of because all you'll be doing is attacking and thinking of what you can do to the opponent and not actually thinking what the opponent can do to you so it's a big thing to work through uh, so I'm quite pleased with where we got to uh, working on this um, this uh, system so we play as black and just taking it nice and steady all pretty normal samey type stuff here with the opening and uh, they've gone for the soft opening but like I've said I've changed my thought processes on it being a soft process but I'll still call it a soft process when I see these like pawn moves here um, because the the main thing about it is is that it loses to me I'm terming that as it loses them tempo in developing their piece so it's like a soft attack to my structure on the board it's not a major it's not a major attack in any way shape it's not intermediate it's soft it's not beneficial for them Yes, it blocks off bishop access to certain squares and stuff, and it can also, you know, get the pawn to move down, you know, the, come down here, that type of thing. But it's a longer process. So I am in for the long process, but if I can get some intermediate moves in, that shortens that longer process for the opponent. So then when they're pos trying to position for a longer play game, all of their access points have been cut off early on so it's harder for them to actually get those longer play maneuvers and pieces into the game so we developed the knight attacking the pawn as we can see 
no protection on the pawn so we are bringing it out for a purpose knight comes down and we just develop the bishop nice and steadily and we're expecting the probably some power moves here with the pawns like we say just coming down here I, I class these as soft moves looking probably to open up his bishop you know for the fianchetto just from the way that he's developed and there's nothing majorly wrong with the way they've developed it's just one move here on this far side with this pawn <coughs> has lost them tempo i've got to believe in something so this is what i'm believing in in that they lost tempo by pushing this pawn down so they do push down so they've gone for another soft move in my eyes soft in terms of development yeah very impactful in terms of developing their pawns because their pawns are getting further advanced down the board but in terms of development on the board with their other key pieces such as looking to get their king castled their king is not yet castled this bishop is blocking its way so really that sort of tempo in terms of being able to get your king to safety is a key thing as part of our mantra it's, it's very key um, in the in the process of chess it's a key thing you know king safety there are players that can leave the king in the center of the board and you know work around it but they do tend to have to work a lot harder and the game doesn't feel good for the for the player when they're playing like that they may win from it but it just doesn't feel very comfortable for them so we go for what looks like a soft move but in my head it's not because what it's doing is is this pawn here potentially could be coming down onto our knight which is a smaller piece attacking a higher piece and we don't really want our knight getting disturbed because we are protecting this pawn here and we've got lovely traction to move into the center as well so this is a and to me a beautiful movement it's not here to stop this bishop because i don't have any problems with doubling my pawns up here if the bishop did take so the main reason for that is a functional reason which is to stop this pawn from actually attacking this knight so again they've gone for another soft move so they've gone for three soft moves in this game not actually gone for any king protection at the minute no development of their bishop here and no development of their bishop here so I'm, in my head I'm getting a little bit concerned for their position I'm also celebrating in the fact that well okay if they're going to play like this they are genuinely going to lose tempo but as I've mentioned before I have seen players play like this and still come out with some type of advantage on the board so all I'm thinking is get my king to safety develop my pieces appropriately so that at each stage hopefully our pieces are working together to put pressure towards any of their weak squares weak spaces or their king or the king or area around the king so now they decide to open up again they've gone with another pawn move okay so i, I would class this as another soft move because it's not developing any of their minor or major pieces it's developing another pawn it's actually attacking and it potentially is opening up the center uh, against their pieces which aren't developed key key piece i'm talking about is the king so the king isn't developed so he's attacking without actually sorting out his bed it's almost like you know you've you've just gone to sleep and then you you know you feel like you want to wake up a bit but no you want to go out and um, go and fight somebody in the street while you're still asleep so you, you get up half half asleep you run out and then you just fight the f first person that you see it's not going to board well because you're half asleep you haven't got dressed your bed's not sorted your house isn't sorted you can hardly open your eyes you've not put any nour nourishment inside you you've not had your breakfast you've got no energy so all of these things are playing against you. Yeah, it's a bit of a drastic story, but this is the sort of drastic nature of where we're currently at in this particular game. This is the story I was telling myself about how my opponent was playing. 
the opponent will could have their own story, you know, and their own strategies. But you've got to have your well. For me, I've got to have my own strategy, or else I won't get out of bed. I won't get changed. I won't have my breakfast. I won't get ready for the day. This is me having my breakfast, sorting out my bed, you know, um, brushing my teeth, cleaning up the ta- cleaning up the room, hoovering, tidying up, and then I'm ready for the day. So they capture and we capture back. So they've captured now with a piece, a minor piece, not developed any of the other pieces. So there must be about eight or nine moves behind proper development in the game. And we're looking to try and take advantage of that. So the queen takes. So now we do a, a pawn push here. Again, looking at it, you could go, well, that's a soft move, but no, it's got an application. Application is this pawn here, again, is looking at coming down onto our knight or it has the potential for so developing this pawn also releases our bishop here to sit on this side if the pawn does push we can take quite nicely if the queen takes our queen the bishop takes the queen and so on and so on so we've sorted out our bed like we said we've got out we've brushed our teeth we've combed well not my hair but you know um <laughs> I've, I've creamed my skin you know so i'm feeling fresh Okay, I've got dressed, I've got my coffee, you know, I've had my toast, all of that. So now I'm thinking my pieces are ready for the day. On the other side of the coin, as we can see, the opponent's pieces don't look ready for the day as yet. Their queen now is in the centre of the board. That's one of the key things within the mantra that we're running, is that realistically the queen doesn't have a place in the centre of the board even when it's whipping off pieces all over the place it could be taking pawns off left right and center because each time it's making a move is less time that other pieces are developing and getting that potential to work as a team to gain further proper advantages so the bishop comes out now attacking the knight it's developed so we can do a small move attacking a higher piece here so a small piece attacking a higher piece, no issues there. Because our bed is sorted out, we've, we're ready for the day. Whatever the opponent throws at us, we can sit back, look and see if we can defend against it, or see if we can counter attack, or find a better position on the board. And they do actually capture. Again, they're capturing and their king is not actually ready. It's not safe, it's still in the centre of the board now our bishop has got three pieces under attack it's got the queen it's got the knight and it's got the rook as well so that's pretty pretty damaging because the queen is going to have to move but they don't move the queen they push the pawn down and so that's attacking and the king has not got to safety as yet so the bishop can take the pawn, still on the queen, on the knight, and on the rook, with the support of the pawn here. And then we do have potential, if the queen does move to the side, we do have potential for the rook to move to this square here, pinning the king. But then, realising that there's an awesome opportunity for the bishop to take the knight with a check on the king also attacking the rook so it's winning two pieces for the price of one in fact two pieces for the price of none so it's two pieces for free so that's pretty awesome in terms of being able to take advantage of the fact that the king hasn't got castled the queen's doing all this work in the center of the board lack of development of their bishops and the rooks are not linked up so they've paid the price for basically undevelopment of pieces and not having that fear factor of keeping pieces safe especially the king so we grab the rook so now we can put a smaller piece attacking a higher piece if you have a look at the um, danger zone so the opponent 
out of all of the moves that they made this is the one move that they then came in on and went right I'm going to finish this game now if I wasn't aware if I wasn't awake you know I hadn't got my pieces um, ready for the day and I wasn't feeling as sharp and maybe I thought well I'm going to move my bishop out of the way so that his rook doesn't come and get me some at some point then he would have had a lovely checkmate position uh, to me I'm classing as like definite lazy man's chess because they've done no major work whatsoever and I've seen these types of games occur across the board where one player does some fantastic play they've got themselves sorted out and then the one who has not done much development of their pieces does not done anything during the game they do a move like this and then they get a checkmate and all that beautiful work that the opponent did goes to waste because this opponent actually uses the answer so I think the key thing out of all of this particular game is realistically looking at your blind spots even when you feel that you're you're winning like I took the rook here so and I'm feeling really good about my position because like I've got a minor piece up and everything you know so I've got like a minor piece up I've taken a rook off the board I'm, I'm like whoa in heaven here but years of experience have shown me that I have to look at the back end so every time the opponent makes a move why have they made that move and that is crucial so I can't ignore that movement so we can block it off by a smaller piece attacking a higher piece that dis disorientates the opponent a little bit there was a missed opportunity there and I believe I, reali I realised it afterwards <clears throat> so I'm, I'm assuming that this pawn could have just pushed up here and it was a, it's a fork on the queen <clears throat> and the bishop queen's already under attack so what was the potential the queen couldn't come down here to put a check on the king just go back make sure we get the right position yep okay so if we pushed up here um, what was the fear element that I had if we pushed here this bishop could take still got the check so my queen is not going to take back because his queen takes and then he's still got the queen so that's why that pawn manoeuvre wasn't done looks good yep nice little fork it looks brilliant but taking a little bit more time to have a look at this position it is not really to our benefit up thinking we've got a fork in fact the queen could even take but they wouldn't do that bishop takes with a check where do we go from there queen cannot take because the queen takes back and then we've got more pieces on the board it is doable but it would be a hard slog yep so that's why we didn't do that particular move there and um, for those keen eyed um, watchers <laughs> <laughs> so we move the king out of the way and then he's still looking again what it, for it looks like um, an attempt at this, this square here but it's covered off with the queen and the rook also this pawn is covered off so didn't really know what that was apart from I didn't know what that was <laughs> so brought the queen up now looking to pressurise key squares here with the potential bringing the bishop here type thing you know looking for an x-ray onto the bishop getting the rook involved then we can put some pressure onto the queen here if the queen's still there so they move the king looking to get the bishop so we can bring the rook across obviously putting pressure onto the king so now the king is fully in the center of the board and you still have to box clever here because at the end of the day sometimes it's a, it might be a position where you can't just quite get to it so we bring the bishop through looking to tantalize the queen 
probably get the bishop off the board or find a nice position uh, so we capture the bishop and again this is the last part for any educational thing for myself as well included is this is like a, a free free move three days a move game so basically you got up to three days to make your move and in blitz games or super bullet fast games or whatever you know you, you expect like um some type of mouse slip per se so in this particular game i thought that it's this is not a mouse slip you can't mouse slip in a correspondence game you've got too much time to actually take move the piece and then you have to click submit the move so it's it's not a mouse slip it's an error in judgment you know so there's a big difference so i've seen cases and i've done this myself where it, under pressure of time you know because um i would probably be focused on my bishop getting attacked by the rook i probably just move my bishop you know to this square you know just to say right let's move it out of the way or something like that i'm probably miss the fact that I could take this queen here so there's all those sort of negatives to having that tunnel vision the pieces that are under attack we tend to focus on so yeah I'm looking at the bishop let's move it but he's actually made an error and don't know why the bishop wasn't taken maybe they were thinking of coming to actually challenge the queen that's the only other thing I could think and there's or maybe they were thinking they were coming to attack the bishop <laughs> doubly attack the bishop I don't really know it was a bit odd so being able to spot that weakness and take advantage of that weakness it sounds very simple you know what I'm saying here sounds very simple but in reality when you're in these games it's so easy to miss those opportunities to actually capture pieces that are right in front of your own piece because you're probably thinking so much about defending your own piece so it's key within this game here the creative aspect worked for us quite nicely and we logicalized the creative aspect and we also then turn the tables on how the opponent was working their creative thought processes were all over the place they were like really just pushing out pawns left right and center um, block, trying to block off things that potentially weren't going to happen and then putting attacks on things that really weren't going to materialize for a longer period of time and only with support from other key pieces so I think learning this creative thinking process really does help me understand and be able to character, characterize my opponents better in terms of are they being creative or are they logically being creative and if they're just being creative and creative and creative and just creating loads of problems and issues for themselves it probably stands me in good stead um, so that I can logically creatively develop my pieces and find the, the right answers so this game the opponent demonstrated all of the negative aspects of creative thinking with no logicalization of those processes so that's how we could take advantage so really interesting game looking forward to the next one